give him a round of applause. Thank you very much. Uh, now I'll introduce Randy Dillon, Army Vietnam Area Veteran, who will give us a little talk today. Randy? Thank you, Bob. One flag, one land. One heart, one hand. One nation evermore. Happy Flag Day, everyone. It's an honor to be here today. It has been nearly 60 years since our members of our armed forces fought on behalf of the South Vietnamese people. Today, we have the opportunity to not only pause and reflect, but to remember and honor the memory of more than 58,000 men and women who gave so much, paying the ultimate sacrifice for freedom's sake. We also use this occasion to honor and to remember more than 3.4 million personnel who serve the Republic of South Vietnam or elsewhere in Southeast Asia in support of the U.S. military operations in Vietnam. Because of their brave and selfless action in Vietnam veterans, the flame of freedom burns brighter today throughout the world. The tradition of service demonstrated by those who served during the Vietnam War provides lasting te testimony to the indomitable and tenacious spirit that resides in the hearts of the Vietnam veterans. Vietnam veterans are everyday people made extraordinary by events beyond their control. They did their duty, not out of bravado or boldness, but out of sense of duty and because they had a deep and abiding love for their country. Quite simply, they believed in the promise of the American dream and the essential goodness of America. Vietnam veterans fought to preserve democracy and freedom. Not just here in America, but for the freedom-loving people around the world. The freedom and prosperity we enjoy today is in large part guaranteed by all those who served so honorably in Vietnam. We as Americans are forever thankful to all of them for their unselfish devotions, for their courageous and willingness to put their lives at risk. We honor them because we appreciate what they have given us. Without their contributions, the world would be a very different place, a darker place. Our Vietnam veterans performed the highest form of public service. When it came down to it, they stood strong and what was needed, they answered the challenge. It's time for the nation to give our Vietnam veterans their due and thank them for their noble efforts and achievements. Vietnam veterans are worthy of every praise, monuments, and memorials we could offer. The best way to honor them is to ensure that every new generation of veterans is appreciated and receives dignity, respect, and welcome home they have earned, making sure every veteran receives the benefits and entitlements they deserve is one way of maintaining a link to thousands of men and women who helped secure so many blessings for us. The VFW has always been at the forefront in the fight for Vietnam veterans. The battle has been waged on several fronts, ranging from support for GIs during the war to passage of service-connected legislations 
contributions to Vietnam's Veterans Memorial, and our continuing effort to resolve the fate of the wars missing in action. Through it all, the VFW was there to bear the standard, beginning with the GI Bill of Rights for Vietnam era veterans. Passed in June of 1966, we advocate for the benefits of PAR with those granted to previous veterans. There were also problems unique to Vietnam. One was chemical and the other was psychological. The use of ancient orange resulted in a 15 year fight for presumptive compensation. Post-traumatic stress disorder produced need for veteran centers, which finally became a reality in 1979. Renewed in, in, in innovative employment programs were called for an extension of veterans preference was launched. In 1965, the VFW started a nationwide movement to support the boys in Vietnam. As a veteran ourselves, we understood how important it was to forge a link with the troops through sending tons of relief parcels. During the course of the war, nine VFW commanders in chief visited fighting men in the field. Every year since our VFW commander in chief visits Vietnam as part of the Southeast Asia trip, our VFW team makes this trip each year to measure the progress being made in the recovery of Americans who American remains from the Vietnam War. Before leaving here today, let's pause to honor those who selflessly sacrificed to protect and defend our freedom by recommitting ourselves to our families and to our communities and to our country. Though long overdue, today America recognizes each and every Vietnam veteran who did not receive the proper welcome home they earned and deserve. Thank you for your service and welcome home. Hey, thank you, Randy. You know, I had a talk back on March 29th, which uh, too emotional for me to get through, so I appreciate Randy reading that today. That did a very good job. I appreciate that. John Van Horn, we have another military song. Thank you. John, yeah, we appreciate that. Uh, we will now place the wreath up on here. Uh, Ron Rowe is absent today. He was a United States Navy Vietnam veteran assigned to gunboats. He was a Purple Heart recipient and wounded in Vietnam. It is due to his uh, wounds, he cannot be here today, so our special thanks go out to him. 
Uh, we will have Tom Linderberg, Specialist, Purple Heart recipient, United States Vietnam veteran, Sergeant Alicia Collins, and Chief Don Bernholtz, please present to read. of the flowers, we'll have Ann Collison, who is a personal uh, trainer, we'll have steps for events, and Basic Fitness Center in Carroll, and Tanya Leeds. Thank you, girls. Special recognition goes to Specialist David Martin, United States Army, Navy era, and Collison, who has steps for vets, like I said, Basic Fitness Center, John Van Horn for, for playing today, and Sheriff Ken Primary for being here. I have a presentation of the plaque of the Carroll County veterans who came all in uh, Vietnam. for the Carroll County veterans who gave it all in Vietnam. Tanya Leach, who is the uh, service officer here for Carroll County veterans. Thank you, Bob. I would like to ask the staff from Thomas Westhaven to please come up front. Now we're here in the room. of the Carroll County Veterans Affairs Office and veteran uh, Don Bernal. We have a plaque that's similar to this with a picture to honor those soldiers that did not return home um, to Carroll County from the Vietnam War. And so um, we thought that it would be a very nice addition to put in your veterans living room um, area. Uh, Carroll County is very fortunate. Carroll, here's the plaque. <laughs> Carroll County is very fortunate to have a VA contractor nursing home and we want to say thank you for <coughs> taking care of the veterans and everything that you do, the surviving spouses of the veterans and their families. So thank you. The, the main thing for this ceremony today is for those who gave all. The soldiers we have here on this poster gave all. Some gave some, some gave all. We need to honor the people that gave all. That's what this ceremony is about. So. In 2007, one of my granddaughters and I went to a traveling wall display down in Harlan, Iowa. As we approached the stadium to go inside, a lady dressed in black came up to me and she said, excuse me, sir, are you a Vietnam veteran? I said, well, yes, I am. 
She said, I'm your little sis. I'm every Vietnam and Vietnam era veterans little sis. She said, I have something for you. It's a pin in the shape of a heart. It's a wounded heart, wounded because of the way the Vietnam and Vietnam era veterans were treated when they came home. Diagonally across the heart is a band-aid to try and help heal that wounded heart. In the center of the band-aid is a clock that says it's way past time all Vietnam and Vietnam era veterans were welcomed home properly. She handed me the pin, shook my hand, gave me a hug and said, welcome home, my brother. Well, that's meant so much to me to have that happen in front of my granddaughter, to have her see grandpa get that little measure of respect we all should have had all those years before. So I started buying them from that lady and whenever I have the opportunity, I will present these to Vietnam and Vietnam era veterans. To date, I have presented over 2,000 of these. And it's my pleasure now to, uh, I, I would like you to kind of take a look at the, uh, the gentleman up here in the front row. These are your Vietnam and Vietnam era veterans. Back in the day, they epitomized the definition of the term badass. They had to be in order to come back home. So with that, I will do this pen presentation. Becky Ed, we will not have the benediction, but Chaplain John Van Horn. <laughs> Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for all of our veterans, not just Vietnam, but from all, all wars and all who have served our country and those who are continuing to serve our country at this time. We ask you to um, continue to bless us. We ask you to continue to bless and give strength to the people working at this wonderful facility who are looking after and caring for our veterans. And um, we ask you to um, look after Ron Rowe, who is having some health problems and not doing well. And finally, since we are a farming community, if you would like to send some rain our way, we would very much appreciate it. And it is in your heavenly name that we pray, amen. Thank you, John. And only for that, look for your piano playing today and all the beautiful military music. 
We appreciate that. Uh, we now have a retirement of the colors. That's going to be where they are. All right, thank you. Well, again, I want to thank everybody for coming today. It's a special day in, in my heart being a Vietnam veteran and coming here and speaking in front of you guys today. Uh, I would have worn my navy blue if it didn't fit me anymore, so I wore my whites today. So um, thank you all for coming, and uh, have a good flag day. Thank you.